Remember the first time you learned to make scrambled eggs? The eggs were great, you got the right amount of moisture and you were damn proud of yourself. What a great little master chef you are. What most of us have in common other than being proud of the eggs we make is that we probably made them on a non-stick Teflon pan. And since that initial burst of confidence, we've all relied on our best friend, that non-stick Teflon, to help us be good cooks. But is Teflon the best thing for us to cook with? We try so hard to get the right ingredients and eat right, but is it possible that the utensils we cook in can also have an impact on our health? Well, welcome to the Whole Truth Academy, the food and nutrition course we all should have been taught in school. Firstly, what's the non-stick pan and why is it called Teflon? The non-stick coating on your pan is made from polytetrafluoroethylene or PTFE, not Teflon. Teflon is just a brand of PTFE. But because it's such a famous brand and a much easier word to say, over time we have started to use it as a synonym for non-stick utensils. Just like no matter what detergent you use, you'll always say Surf Leana or Xerox Karwa Lena. Now, Teflon or PTFE is used widely because food doesn't stick to it, making it easier to cook with and clean. Another good thing is that it doesn't react with food. The real harm comes from Teflon when it's exposed to very high heat. Non-stick pans emit toxic fumes when the pan's temperature reaches about 280 degrees. And these toxic fumes from heating up Teflon, they are no joke. They've been documented to kill pet birds and inhaling these fumes can give us flu-like symptoms like fever, chills and headaches. This is polymer fume fever, popularly known as the Teflon flu. Interesting, huh? Now is a good moment to share this video to all your MasterChef friends who love their non-stick vessels. First of all, let's decide the factors on which we will judge any type of utensil. There are only two. First, the utensil should have a minimal reaction to all kinds of food. So whether you're trying to cook omelettes or make a biryani, your utensil should have as minimal an effect as possible on the flavor or nutritional profile or the ingredients or the overall dish. Second, the cooking utensils you buy should distribute heat evenly across themselves. Some dishes like stews and braises require heat to spread slowly. While other dishes like pancakes, dosas and stir-fried vegetables require heat to spread fast so that they cook well. Now, let's look at the utensils in your kitchen and figure out how they fare. The great thing about cooking in metal utensils is that metals are great conductors of heat. They cook food quickly and they absorb, distribute and retain heat evenly. But one downside? they can often react to the food we cook in them. Let's start with copper. For kings and queens and for all of you who can afford it, copper is great to cook Indian food in. Gravies and rice dishes will work really well here. One problem with copper though is that it tends to react to acidic foods such as tomatoes and lemons and can leach into your food. Copper accumulation in the body can lead to copper poisoning over time. This is why copper cookware is sold as alloys like brass and bronze, often with a tin coating. The tin coating prevents the metal from leaching. Tin does not react with acids and our bodies don't absorb tin. A tussle with copper is that it also reacts to moisture, which leaves that little blue residue on top. This affects the flavors in your food. So watch out while cleaning copper utensils. Use soft materials to clean it because a harsh scrub can remove that protective coating. Basically, if you can afford copper utensils, go for it. But don't be cooking on naked utensils. Instead, look out for a tin coating and then maintain it with care. Next up, aluminium. For those who are not kings and queens, people like me, aluminium utensils are popular in our homes because it's cheaper. They are a good choice to use when a dish involves boiling or dishes that require even baking. So it's good for making rice and great for baking a cake. Unfortunately though, just like copper, aluminium too 
when heated with acidic food will seep into the food so what to do well just like tin coating in copper utensils look for aluminium cookware that is anodized anodization is a process of adding a layer of aluminium oxide to the surface of the pure aluminium metal to prevent it from interacting with our food so you still get the even heating from the aluminium base but no leaching now let's continue down the periodic table and take a look at a few more metals and whether they make for good pans and kadhais iron cookware as we saw copper and aluminium need to be coated else they leach into our food and that can be harmful with iron on the contrary a small amount of iron in our food is actually good it can raise iron and hemoglobin levels in our blood so the utensil itself can be uncoated it's also a heavy utensil meaning it's unlikely that food will burn fast making iron vessels great for searing meat and for caramelizing food the one downside of iron though is you have to be okay with the slight metallic taste and of course maintenance of this one is tricky too if you leave your iron pan wet it will rust so if you're trying to get grease out of it don't leave it soaking in the sink wipe off the food particles first rinse it with hot water and dry immediately with a clean towel that's all finally let's look at our good old most trustworthy best friend of all bartans the stainless steel bartan take those iron pans alloy it with chromium carbon and nickel and tada high quality stainless steel pans contain 18 to 20% chromium the presence of chromium prevents the iron from rusting Unlike all those issues that we faced with copper, aluminium and iron, stainless steel's big USP is that it will be resistant to corrosion and to acid. Now you see why it's so widely used. Okay, so if you've been taking out everything from your kitchen cabinet as you watched this video, put them back one by one as I summarize for you. Teflon and nonstick, do not heat it above 280 degrees. Copper, make sure it has a tin coating. Aluminium make sure it has an anodized layer iron don't let it rust and stainless steel go crazy let your inner master chef loose eating healthy isn't that complex you get good ingredients you cook them in a good oil and you cook them on a good pan do all three and your body will thank you for all the care and if you liked what you heard at the whole truth academy today do like this video and share it with your friends who love cooking and oh please Do subscribe please